quantization and digitization we discussed already um, ADC basically uh, takes the samples or, or basically converts the input signal into multiple samples uh, using the sampling time and each sample is um, converted into a quantized value based on how many bits you are using for the ADC quantized value is basically an analog value it's not a digital value it's an analog value but from a discrete sets of analog value based on what is your uh, what is your uh, bit size of the D, uh, ADC or DAC and then finally each quantized value is converted into digital equivalent code so how do you calculate the uh, quantized value and then the, the corresponding digital code so first step is to calculate any any time you are given uh, a DAC or ADC basically the reference voltage will be given to you so some D, uh, ADCs can only generate positive uh, values or only convert positive values and those are called uh, basically unidirectional or unipolar ADCs or unipolar quantizers and then some ADCs can work for both positive and negative values and those are called bidirectional or bipolar ADCs or quantizers so generally ADCs that are unipolar or quantizers that are unipolar they have only a positive reference voltage and the negative reference voltage is ground so the voltage source that is connected to the IC is positive VCC and zero volt and the bipolar quantizers or bipolar ADCs you have positive reference voltage as well as negative reference voltage DC source so positive VCC and negative VCC so whichever quantizer you're using we're just going to discuss a, a general um, expression that will fit for both of them now remember the negative reference voltage for unipolar is zero right so we're going to discuss the negative reference voltage but if you're using a unipolar quantizer or unipolar or, or um, omnidirect or single directional uh, adc then negative reference voltage will be zero for that so the first thing that we do is we calculate the step size of the quantizer so remember it makes steps remember I discussed with you any voltage that is converted analog voltage into quantized or digital basically each value is assigned a specific step or a specific value so if your value let's say is if your input signal if your input signal is here right here it's passing through here this is your input signal value V sample right so based on which step it is closer to either the step above or a step below so you're gonna round it off right this value is assigned to one of the steps if it is closer to the next step then this becomes that quantized value corresponding to this signal or this sample right and if this value is closer to the step before that then basically this becomes the quantized value corresponding to the system so that's how it, it is working so to calculate the step size what is the step size the step size is this basically the difference between the two consecutive step is the step size which is the minimum voltage that an ADC can generate non-zero minimum voltage that ADC can generate so this is your step size the size of each step consecutive step so first you calculate the step size which you calculate the positive reference voltage minus the negative reference voltage over 2 to the power n where n is the number of bits of your quantizer or ADC so for example if your positive reference voltage is 5 volt negative reference voltage is negative 5 volt and you have a 2-bit converter then your Delta will simply be 5 minus negative 5 over 2 to the power 2 4 in other words 10 over 4 which will be 2.5 volt so your delta is going to be 2.5 volt the, the this step size is going to be 2.5 volt if it's a unipolar quantizer and we are negative is 0 then you have 5 0 over 4 so it's going to be 5 over 4 delta and that's going to give you what 1.25 volt or something 5 over 4 no not 1.25 sorry uh, yeah it's going to be 1.25 volt uh, 2.5 divided by 2 1.25 volt in case if we are negative is 0 so 
So that's the first step to calculate the step size. Once you calculate the step size, then you have to figure out what is the corresponding step corresponding to your input signal. So let's say this is a step zero. This is step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on and so forth. So you're gonna find out which step number is, uh, which step number will be assigned to your input value. So for example, again, if my input value is closer to the fourth step, then the fourth step is gonna be assigned to that. Or is that the third step? This is the third step. So third step is gonna be assigned to it. If my input value is closer to the second step, then the second step is gonna be assigned to my input value. So now we're gonna calculate the step number corresponding to your input. And this is how we calculate the step number. We take the input value, input sample value, and we subtract the negative V reference from that. And we divide that by the step size, round it off, and we get the step number. So again, let's go and check. Let's say if um, I'm converting um, 3.6 volt. So my 3.6, and let's say it's a bipolar converter, and my negative V reference is five, so minus negative five divided by um, 2.5 was my step size in the last. Let's say we have four uh, two bit converter, right? So this is gonna give you three plus, that's gonna be five and three, eight, 8.6 over 2.5 and you round when you do the calculation and you round it off that's going to be the step number corresponding to my 3.6 volt input okay now once you find the step number then you find the corresponding quantized value corresponding to that step so remember that the, the, the quantized value uh, let's say you have 2.5 volt you have four steps, you have 2.5 volt corresponding to each step. So you have one, two, three, and four. So you have zero volt, you have one point, uh, you have 2.5 volt, you have five volt, and then you have 7.5 volt. So these are your quantized level, right? So 3.6 volt, actually it's going to be, uh, I, would, I would say it's gonna be close to the, uh, close to the step number uh, one. If this is the step zero, this is the step one. So it's gonna be close to step one with the course, with the value of 2.5 volt. So in this, you are calculating that value, 2.5 volt, right? If you, uh, well, I'm, I'm doing it unipolar because I'm going from zero. Uh, if it is bipolar, then of course it's not gonna go from zero, it's gonna go from negative value. In any case, so you're gonna take quantized, you can cal calculate quantized value the step number that you calculated in the last um, step times the step size plus the negative reference voltage, okay? So plus the negative reference voltage. So let's say if, if my step number is two and my delta is uh, 2.5 or 1.25, whatever is that, and my negative reference voltage is negative five. So that's gonna give me my quantized voltage corresponding to my input sample. And then the digital code basically depends on the step number. So you convert the step number into its equivalent digital code. So let's say we have four steps, right? We have step zero, step one, step two, and step three. So the code for zero binary equivalent is gonna be zero, zero binary equivalent of one is gonna be zero one, binary equivalent of two is gonna be one zero, and binary equivalent of three is gonna be one one. So those, that's gonna be the digital code corresponding to that, uh, the step that you calculated in um, 2.5, equation 2.5. So those are the steps that you have to go through to convert a sample, analog sample, into a digital code passing through the quantization or quantized value of that digital code, okay? Now the difference between uh, the quantized value and the actual value is called the quantization error. And quantization error range is 
negative half of the step size to positive half the of the step size. Why? Again, remember how we are assigning uh, the, the input value. So it's, let's say you have these, this is step. And then let's say your input voltage is this right here. Oh, it's still right. Uh, your input voltage is your input voltage is this in orange. So half of the step is this right in the middle. This is delta by two and this is delta by two. Now remember whichever uh, step it is closer to, it's just gonna jump to that step. If it is closer to the next step, then this is gonna jump to the next step, right? So the difference between your actual value and the quantized value will be within half of the step size. And likewise, if your input lies here, it's gonna jump down to the uh, previous step. And again, the, the difference between the actual value and the, st the quantized value is gonna be half of the step size, right? So the quantization error, EQ, as you can see, is the quantized value minus the input value. And the range is gonna be negative half of the step size. If quantized value is less than the input voltage, that is, if it is jumping back, or it is going to be uh, within delta by two if it is jumping forward. That is quantized value is greater than the input voltage. But in any case, the absolute error is going to be within delta by two, right? The absolute error value is going to be within half of the step size. If your error, quantization error is more than half of the step size, then you're making an error somewhere. So check your work. So go over this, I explained it in detail. Um, you can look at it. Um, I have done a few examples. Go over the examples as well. Look at the examples. And that's the discussion about quantization. Uh, and in, the, in this the same video, since this is the last topic, let me go ahead and discuss this. Um, to basically calculate um, the effect of sampling and quantization on the actual value of the signal, we calculate signal to power quantization noise, signal power to quantization noise power. The higher this value, quantization has less effect on your total signal. Uh, the lower this value, quantization has more effect on your total signal. That is, you have more error. So to calculate that, if you have a theoretical signal, then to calculate the SNR, you take the RMS value of the theoretical signal. For example, if you have a sinusoidal signal, let's say, right? You take the RMS value of that, V peak over square root of two, you square that RMS value and divide that by step size square over 12. And that's gonna give you the SNR value, signal signal to noise uh, power value. And most of the time we calculate that into decibel. To calculate that into decibel, basically you just take this value and multiply that by 20 log of 10 SNR. And that's gonna give you the value in decibel. And if you simplify it, it's just gonna come out to be this. But in general, any signal to noise ratio or any gain that you have, you wanna convert into decibel. All you need to do is, um, if it's a voltage gain or current gain, that is not the power gain. Uh, since there's a voltage over here, that's why we are using uh, the 20 log. So anyways, all you have to do is use 20 log 10 of uh, the gain, and that's gonna give you decibel but you can use this equation as I'm giving you. Now, if you have samples, instead of the, the practical, the theoretical signal, if you have discrete samples, like the, the um, project that you're gonna do, the first project, where you have multiple samples. So if you have samples and you are converting, uh, calculating the, the quantized value of each sample, so you have a vector which, with the original values, and then you have a vector with the quantized value, corresponding quantized value. You can calculate the quantization error by multiplying by subtracting the vector of the original values from the vector of the quantized value. So each value, uh, each quantized value, uh, each input value is gonna be subtracted from the corresponding quantized value. So you're gonna get a vector of 
uh, quantization error. So to calculate the SNR from the samples, if you have discrete values, that is, this is what you're going to use. You're gonna square each sample, input sample, and then you're going to sum all of them together. And then you're gonna square each quantization error value from the, the quantization error vector and then you're gonna sum all of those values together. Square them, first square them and then sum them. And then take the ratio of that and that's gonna give you the SNR value using the samples. And to, to convert that into decibels, of course, as I said, take 20 log 10 of this value and that's gonna convert it back into decibel and give you the decibel value. So remember, this is what you're going to use in your project number one. And when I discuss project number one, I can discuss it again, but this is basically you are using in project number one. And this finishes up chapter number two.